But you're a Manchester United fan, are you not? You know, I have a split allegiance effectively, really. I, you know, when I was in London for many, many years, it, Chelsea I could go and watch. It was quite difficult to go and watch United. Some would argue you should be trying to buy the club that you grew up supporting. Yes, I mean, I, I can understand that, but Manchester United is not for sale. So Jim Ratcliffe there saying Manchester United is not for sale, a statement which I wholeheartedly disagree with. Like anything in business, Manchester United has a value at which the Glazers will sell the club. And given his failed £4.25 billion bid to buy Chelsea, which has been rejected out of hand despite him still going forward with it, I would implore Sir Jim Ratcliffe, a boyhood Manchester United fan who was born seven miles from Old Trafford to buy United. In this video, I want to run through it. I want to explain exactly who Jim Ratcliffe is. You might have seen his name in the press, but who is he? Would he actually buy United? Yes, this is a dream, but it's a dream that I'm going to push because I think there is a genuine opportunity there for us to talk about a genuine owner who has the money, has links to Manchester United and wants to buy a Premier League club. And that's Sir Jim Ratcliffe. Let's get straight into this one. There's no intro. Let's go. Sir Jim Ratcliffe, who is he, right? He's pictured there with Lewis Hamilton spraying because Ineos is invested in Mercedes AMG as well as they bought Nice. Uh, they bought Team Sky, the cycling team. You can see his net worth there on Forbes down as 15 billion. He's the owner of a chemical powerhouse called Ineos. He was the founder of it and it was Ineos that uh, lead, were leading the bid for Chelsea. Now, this may not happen, okay? And I know that and I'm not saying it will. But the dream, I'd say, could become a reality. That it's, it, it's right there in front of us. We've got a man there who was born quite literally just over seven miles away from Old Trafford. A man who was a boyhood Manchester United fan be before he became a huge business mogul, moved to London and couldn't go and visit the club anymore. It was more difficult to visit, he said, in an interview with the BBC. But look, he might be saying here that he's not giving up on buying Chelsea. But what's happened with that bid is that it's been rejected out of hand. It was too late. It was beyond the deadline. And there's a different bid that's gone through. Who's it by? Is it Todd Burley? Todd, someone? Let's have a look. Tom Crotty. Nope. Who is it with? Todd Burley. I was right. A consortium led by LA Dodgers owner Tom Burley is understood to be the preferred bidder by Chelsea. It's not something that Radcliffe wants. He wants to buy Chelsea. But hell, if you can't buy Chelsea, Jim... Why can't you look at Manchester United? Now, you know full well that I've been speaking about anything to do with the Glazer selling for a long, long time. Video there from October 2018. Back when Manchester United were being linked, were being purchased by the Saudi Arabia Al Saud family. Now, we all know what's happened since. They've gone and bought Newcastle. But that was a conversation that I had with David Conn at the time about the Glazers and the concept. Would they sell? Because that's the thing that a lot of you are going to shout in the comments. Sam, what's the point here? You're wasting my time. I don't know, you probably said it with a lot of videos. Uh, but the Glazers won't sell. They just want us as a dividend cash cow. But the Glazers, as Avram Glazer showed last year, when he cashed out over £100 million worth of shares, they're taking some of their money away from Manchester United. It may still be their cash cow. It may still be exactly what they want it to be. But I think there's a, there's a fucking opportunity there for Manchester United to look towards a new set of owners in Jim Ratcliffe and that Ineos group. And it probably won't happen, right? But for people to just blindly dismiss it, I think is wrong. And with everything that's going on right now with the 1958 protests, I think it's important that we have this discussion in this video. Now, Jim, of course, has spoken about buying Manchester United previously. As you can see there, this is an interview with The Times back in 2019. And he was specifically asked about Manchester United. And this is what he had to say. How about United, assuming the Glazers were willing to sell? No, not at the moment. They are in quite a big pickle as a business. Now, that's a polite way of putting it. They haven't got the manager selection right, and they haven't bought well. They have been the dumb money, which you see with players like Fred. Well, I think he's a bit harsh on the Fred situation, given what's happened since. But nobody can argue that Jim was wrong there. Because if you take a look at Manchester United, it's not that we were the dumb money. We were dumb with the money. We look at Manchester United spending here. That was, a, that was Moyes' one. That was pretty modest. 69 million, but we didn't sign anybody. The year after with Louis van Gaal, 175 million. Who did we sign? Everybody. Di Maria, Shaw, Herrera, Rolo, Rojo, Blind, Falcao. Jeez, how many of them are successful? Not many. Next year, 140 million. Martial, Schneidlin, Memphis. 
Matteo Damian, Schweinsteiger. Next year, 166 million. Pogba, Mikatarian, buy. Next year, 180 million. Oh, scroll forward. Who here? Lukaku, Matic, Lindelof, Sanchez. Oh, God. 75 million. Fred, Diogo Delo, 211 million. Maguire, Fernandez. Oh, I suppose you yeah, Fernandez, great. Yeah, you could include him in there. He came in January. Wan Bissaka and Dan James. And the year after, 75 million with Donny van der Beek. Then what after that? 126 million with Sancho, Varane, and Ronaldo. The list goes on of signings that Manchester United have made, and 80% of them are exactly what Jim is describing it as right there. Dumb money. Money spent incorrectly by the wrong person. But that's not necessarily because Manchester United have been dumb. It's because Ed Woodward was the man who held the fucking purse strings. The man who drove a strategy to give fringe players bumper contracts to protect their values as assets and we can't sell them. And it's crucifying the club. Man United have been run by dumb people for despicable owners. Doesn't mean the Manchester United are the dumb money. And I would argue that it's very smart money right now because United are on the way up. We're definitely on the right curve and the right structures are coming behind the scenes because it kind of was the dumb money. Like he wouldn't have come into the United in 2019 and taken on the structure that existed. It would have been a sort of a bit of a money pit for Jim Ratcliffe if he came in at that point. But it's a bit different now and he's got the money for it, right? Here, £4.25 billion bid for Chelsea has been rejected out of hand. How much is Manchester United worth according to Forbes at the moment? $4.2 billion. Well, the moons have aligned. Obviously, dollars and pounds. He's well got the worth to buy Manchester United. And one thing I will say about everything that's going on at the club right now, this is why I really support what's going on with the 1958 and the movement and the protests that have happened against Norwich, against Chelsea, against Brentford. It's been a real show of consistent... Uh, hostility towards our owners and the fact that Manchester United fans want the Glazers out of our fucking club. We've been, we've wanted it ever since before they took over our club and it, it's just getting louder and louder and louder and it shouldn't go away and it won't go away. But I think it could go away if Jim Ratcliffe came into the club and became the new owner. That's what I think anyway. I like this video so I'm going to go full Go back to it. The game against Norwich City for a three o'clock kickoff. They're going to wait till 317. That's uh, 17 minutes past kickoff. One minute for every year that the Glazer family have been in charge. Some men do just want to watch the world burn. Some men just want to watch their bank account rise slowly without having to do anything to work for it. That's what the Glazers have done to Manchester United for so long. But I can look at this situation here and I can look at what Jim Ratcliffe wanted to do at Chelsea. But he's unable to do at Chelsea. He tried to buy the club. He called Manchester United dumb money previously. I would have agreed with that sentiment back in 2019. I would disagree to say that Manchester United are the dumb money now. We're starting to get rid of the of the straitjacket that has strangled our club for so long in the, in the shape of Ed Woodward. Ultimately, we're still wearing it, and that's in the shape of the Glazers. Now that we've got rid of Woodward, we've got rid of Judge, and we're starting to get rid of the old furniture, and we're starting to really start acting like a football club. I don't think that we're the dumb money anymore. I think that we're a sleeping giant that's that can and will be on the up. And I think if Jim Ratcliffe really is sitting there on, on a valuation of that, and he was born seven miles away from Manchester United, and he's previously talked about buying Manchester United, I don't think he can just blindly say now that Manchester United isn't for sale. Man United is just like any asset in the world. It has the right price. And if the right price comes in, the Glazers will sell. Just like Avram Glazer cashed in on £100 million worth of shares and walked away from it, the Glazers will sell the club if the right bid comes in. I would love Jim Ratcliffe to do it. It might not happen. It's a dream. Hell yeah, it is the dream. But hell, we didn't think that Ragnick would come in. We didn't think that we would appoint a football director. We didn't think that Eric Ten Hag would come in. 
the club's starting to do the right things and uh, look, just imagine how much of a party it would be if the Glazers sold and if Jim Ratcliffe bought the club. It might not happen, but as a boyhood United fan, I don't think that Jim Ratcliffe, given that the failed bid for Chelsea has happened, I don't think he can dismiss it out of hand anymore. And I hope that there's certain people that can put the right pressures on him to maybe spark that conversation. We'll have the conversation here online on United People's TV. You can let me know what you think about my idea or the idea of it in the comments below. You might just think it's a complete and utter pipe dream, but hell, if you don't dream right, I would love it to happen. You would too. You let me know what you think in the comments as always. And make sure you subscribe to United People's TV, all that jazz. <laughs>